My name is Deb Strahanowski, our GFWC International President, and I am very pleased that GFWC is bringing you the last of these wonderful uh, series of our webinar, and I know you'll hear more about that from Juliet. But tonight, we will hear from two very special affiliate organizations, two that work very closely with children, children with medical situations. And the first one is my friend Beth <laughs> from St. Jude down in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and our new friend it, with March of Dimes, Erin Jones. And I think they both are planning to bring some wonderful information for all of us club members to take back to our clubs and share. And I know that they would be happy to share and talk with your club members as well. So Juliet, do you think we're ready to get rolling on this uh, webinar this evening? I think so. We are yeah. ready to go. Okay, enjoy members. Thank you, Madam President. This has just been a phenomenal series. This is our sixth Thursday night where we've talked about advocacy. Um, and I am Juliet Casper, the chair of the Legislation and Public Policy Committee. And I'm here in Little River, South Carolina and represent the Southern region. We have members from all of the regions um, on our committee and we have really enjoyed having all of you join us for this webinar series because we all know that you now have caught the bug that we have which is together we advocate for those in need and tonight we're going to hear about two of our affiliates that help children and we know there are so many children in need and and it's going to be exciting to hear from St. Jude and from March of Dimes be sure to use the chat to make casual um, comments, either as to where you are or uh, what you think of the speakers or how things are going, but put your questions on the Q&A board. And after each of our speakers um, speak, we will address some questions. So St. Jude will do the first presentation and we'll ask a few questions and then March and Dimes will present and we'll have some questions and then you know, we'll have a wrap up at the end in case there's something that you forgot um, and we'll address that. So again, be sure to put the questions in the question and answer the Q&A. And um, as you know, we are recording these, these sessions and they will be available for members to review. Uh, look in news and notes for information on how you can access um, not just this um, tonight's session, but all six of the sessions that we've done. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the man who makes this happen behind the scenes. That's our Darrell Jones, our programs manager. Darrell, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Juliet. I don't want to talk to you guys for too, too long. I want to give our presenters all the time that they need. Um, but thank you guys again for attending all or one or two any of the sessions that you've attended. Um, we put in a lot of work on these, so we truly, truly do appreciate you guys attending and we hope that you have enjoyed them and we know that you're gonna enjoy tonight. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Beth Perkins from St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, who is the Principal Advisor for Partnership Development and Stewardship. So Beth, I'll hand it over. Thank you, Darrell. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, Here, do y'all see that? We do. Perfect. So hello, friends. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And I, you know, I've, I've so enjoyed the partnership that we've had with uh, GFWC. And so tonight I'm going to talk more about our mission advocacy, what makes us continue to grow and to continue to help uh, discover cures to save children. Uh, with pediatric cancer. And this is how GFWC and St. Jude are coming together. We share the same values of helping others through volunteerism or through fundraising or other advocacy efforts. And advocacy is your driving force and that's what St. Jude does. We advocate for every single family in the world who has a child suffering from childhood cancer. And like you, we work tire tirelessly in our efforts. We're often asked the question, why St. Jude? What makes St. Jude different from any other hospital? 
And why should I support St. Jude, a children's hospital located in Memphis, when we have our own children's hospital to support? It's a great question and one that I'm happy to answer. The first thing to understand is that we are not asking you to choose between St. Jude and other charities. We believe that local children's hospitals are an essential part of every community. They deserve and need your support. Thankfully, compassion does not have to be limited to just one cause. St. Jude is a world-class children's hospital, a cutting edge research institution, a degree granting medical center, and a trusted nonprofit. The innovative and collaborative work that we are doing at St. Jude is actually helping to improve the standard of care for children everywhere. Our purpose is clear, finding cures, saving children. We know what's at stake, we are in this together, and we are not going to give up until we find a cure. Ask yourselves, if not St. Jude, then who? Reasons to believe that St. Jude is who we, worthy of your support is that St. Jude creates more clinical trials for cancer than any other children's hospital and turns laboratory discoveries into life-saving treatments and benefits patients. And St. Jude is where doctors send their toughest cases because St. Jude has some of the world's best survival rates for some of the most aggressive forms of cancer. And because the majority of St. Jude funding comes from generous donors, St. Jude has the freedom to focus on what matters most, saving kids regardless of their financial situation. Families never receive a bill from St. Jude for treatment, travel, housing, or food, because all a family should worry about is helping their child live. In perhaps the most emotional time in their lives, St. Jude gives family the peace of mind knowing that they will never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food, and now for the future, for now and for the future. And nobody else provides that level of unqualified support. St. Jude can do this thanks to the incredible generosity of our donors, people just like you. And because of you, almost 87% of the funds necessary to sustain the hospital must be raised each year by ALSAC, who I work for, the fundraising and awareness organization. And that's over two plus billion dollars a year that we must raise in order to um, provide the quality of care that we do. And that's different from other hospitals where most hospitals uh, revenue is generated by insurance collections. We do not have that. So let's talk about the, the power of the brand. And so more of like a consumer advocacy and what we found with the power of our brand. It remains one of the strongest brands in the nonprofit world. More than eight out of 10 Americans recognize the St. Jude brand. And the accolades, these accolades were based on the help of um, research that we did through the Harris and Edge research. Um, because of this, our St. Jude doctors and scientists obtained the resources needed to save the lives of thousands of children, not only in, in Memphis, but also our affiliate clinics here in the U.S. and our official partner sites around the world. St. Jude has been named the number one most trusted nonprofit in the most trusted brands of 2022 report by Decision Intelligence, Morning Consult. The report measured brand trust across industries. For the first time, nonprofits were featured in a special trust in nonprofits category, survey, surveying customer attitudes toward 50 nonprofits, and St. Jude came out on top. And for the ninth year in a row, St. Jude was named the Health Nonprofit Brand of the Year, as well as for the 10th year in a row, we were uh, recognized as one of the top 100 places to work in the United States. We currently have over 12 million active donors, and 26% of those donors are multi multicultural. We are known as the most loved charity, top of mind charity, and most favored charity among African-American, Hispanic, and American audiences. You know, some of the, our other accolades, um, we have the highest favorability of all major nonprofits. Uh, we partner with more than 100 major brands, and St. Jude donors are up to two times as likely to shop brands that partner with St. Jude when compared to overall consumers. So how can you advocate for us? How can you be uh, become involved? Well, through various social media platforms, 
awareness is key to fundraising and, and developing sustainable relationships. Become the ambassador in your community. Be engaged with our 33 field offices who put over put on over 16,000 events a year. Register in our volunteer management database to be kept abreast of events in your area and receive special invitations to our quarterly webinars, our monthly newsletter, and know when events are in your area. Bring St. Jude to your workplace. See how we fit into your corporate social responsibility strategy. Introduce us to your schools and where we can help children learn what giving back is all about through our trikathons, mathathons, our STEM-based middle school program, and the St. Jude Leadership Society for High School Students. Join us as a collective organization in September during National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month by participating in our 60 in-person or virtual walks. Danny Thomas once said that he would rather have 1 million people donate $1 than one person donate 1 million. Awareness is key. Awareness is what helped build St. Jude Children the Research Hospital and what helps keep the doors open. Danny Thomas formed Danny Thomas, Danny's Army in 1962, and we are still going strong. So thank you. I welcome any questions you might have. Uh, but uh, again, I'm open to um, any suggestions you have. I have actually spoke with the uh, I guess the presidents of Tennessee and Idaho just this week to help them with their state conventions. So um, anything I can do for you, please let me know. Hey, Beth. Hey. Juliet. And I heard something new. Uh, tell me more about this um, volunteer database that we can register for. Yes. Uh, let me stop sharing uh, my screen. So if you go to y'all's landing page, uh, stjude.org backslash GFWC, you can actually, there is an icon, a little button that you click on volunteer and you it takes you to register to our volunteer management system. And so you can enter all of your information. You know, another thing, our field offices are always looking for skills-based volunteers. We're always looking for that. And for committee members, if you want to join a committee for a, D, a dinner gala golf event or a walk team or, or, or the walk uh, committee in that area. So you can register in that and it will automatically generate uh, events that pop up in your area. And is it um, it state by state or is it region by region? Well, we- combination? It's a combination. We are we are basically markets, and there are seven territories with it. The, the United States is and Puerto Rico are divided into seven territories, and with that within that are markets. So and it's sort of like GFWC. We have yeah. eight regions, so I get that. Um, one of our members has asked if there are any legislative items that affect what you all do at St. Jude. Um, and I know you mentioned that most of your money comes from um, donations, mm -hmm. but are there um, federal grants or appropriations that you look for as well? Yes. So our funding uh, is 87% of our funding comes from donations from our donors. And then 10% um, of our funding comes from grant funding. So that can either be through the NIH or farms or other, you know, farm, pharmaceutical companies or um, other foundations that uh, will donate for research funding, research grants. And then the other, uh, that 3% uh, comes from uh, insurance recovery if patients have insurance. So we don't bill other we usually don't bill families insurance because it's so costly that if something yeah. happened to somebody else in the family, it could devastate them financially. So um, when we um, finish here with your presentation, if you'll put in the chat um, the address, the internet address that you were talking about for the yeah. volunteer database, if you'll just type that in the chat, I think some of our members would like to see that, which would be great. Perfect. I'll be happy to. And uh, just one last question for me. Um, you know, I've done the the walk for many years and it's been virtual, you know, the last few. 
Do you think we might have in person? Mm -hmm. We have 60 cities that we're doing in person walks and then they'll still be virtual. But are you near Hilton Head? Um, I'm not far from Hilton Head. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're having a huge golf tournament that we're oh, looking yeah. for volunteers of course. Uh, for that as well. But um, so, no, we do have uh, in person walks finally. Perfect. And, I, and one thing I also want to say, I know that uh, so many of your members have asked me about projects they could do for us. You know, a lot of people like to make masks and because of COVID, unfortunately, we cannot accept anything like that right now. Got it. Currently, but we do have Amazon Smile. So, Also in the chat, if you don't mind sharing your um, email address, mm -hmm. because some members um picked up on that you might be willing or St. Jude might be willing to come to state conventions to <laughs> speak so if you'll share your email in the chat then that would be wonderful absolutely if it can't be me I can find somebody maybe within their region that can come and speak on the behalf because I really would like to engage members with our local offices and to build that community and relationship well so, thank you so much Beth There's, thank you all. members have been commenting that they do um, enjoy doing the walk. And um, one member talked about the electronic val Valentine cards. Yes. So yes. thank you. And I'll turn it back to Darrell now. And if we thank have you. more questions for St. Jude, we'll get to those at the end. Yes, okay. please thank do continue Beth. to put those in the Q&A and we'll come back to them at the end. And thank you so much, Beth, for showing our um, women that you can be an advocate, even if it's not legislatively, but you can still be a, a, an issue advocate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We are ready for our next presentation. Um, up next, we have Erin Jones, who is the Director um, of Legislative and Strategic Council at the March of Dimes. So Erin, I'll turn it over to you. And I think you may have another presen presenter on here. I do believe she- uh, I do. So thank you, Drell. Hello, everybody. My name is Erin Jones. I'm going to share my screen. And Kelly Hubbard, who also works with me and my policy team, is with me in case I forget something. But she's going to put stuff in the chat for you because I think there's some things that might be interesting. So I am actually the, I forget even how what my title is anymore, because really what I consider myself to be is an advocate. I think that um, I listened to Juliet in the beginning of this conversation, and I share her passion for being an advocate. and. I think, you know, just thinking about what you what you do every day, whether it's you're advocating for yourself or your children or your family or at work or even here at the Federation, whatever you're doing, you are being an advocate. And I think that we don't give ourselves enough credit for the work that we actually do. So I'm going to move my slides here if I get them to move the right way. There we go. So a little bit about the March of Dimes. I don't know how many people are familiar with us, but we've been around for 85 years. We're celebrating our 85th anniversary this year. And the March of Dimes was founded around polio. Um, our claim to fame was the fact that we found a vaccine and a an eradicated polio in the United States. I know many of you are probably shaking your head going, ah, but lately we've been hearing more about polio. That's a whole conversation for another day. But in general, March of Dimes really is here to lead the fight for health of all moms and babies. We advocate for women, for infants, for children, families across many different issues, both at the federal level, state level, and lo lo local level as well. So what I gave you today is a very quick overview of the policy priorities that we have for the 2023 through 24 season. Um, and we have three major buckets. So we look at the increasing access to health care and quality health care, I should add. Uh, we look at supporting healthy women and babies, and we look at improving research and surveillance, since that's really our claim to fame. So if you look in each one of these categories, there are specific things that we're working on that I think that you as women and advocates in your communities, as part of the Federation, um, would really be interested in learning more about, and we would love to have you join us because every voice counts. So if you look at the first one, we're looking at increase of access to quality health care. What March of Dimes is really advocating for is we want to make sure that women have and families have quality, high value, private health insurance and public health insurance and coverage, as well as programs that provide integrated health care services. And some of the things that we've been really focusing on is looking at the Medicaid product and looking at making sure that women who are postpartum don't just have coverage for 60 days, but have coverage for a full 12 months. 
So this is a really big step in our coverage of Medicaid. This is a big step in looking at postpartum coverage for women and making sure that they get care. Because what we know through data and science and the evidence that's out there, 60 days was an arbitrary number chosen because we had to have a number, but there was no science and evidence behind it. But what we are learning is that if women have coverage for a full year after pregnancy, they have a much more likelihood of getting issues or seeing their doctor, or if there's things that come up that arise during their postpartum time, that they actually will go and see the doctor and they'll have access to care. So what we wanna do is really address anything that a woman is dealing with after the baby is born. And those of us who have had babies know that more often than not, after the baby's born, you need more support than even before the baby's born. So that is really a key piece of legislation that we've been working on both at the federal and at the state level. We're also looking at access to midwives and doulas and making sure that pregnant women have the supports that they would like and the supports that they need, as well as access to quality telehealth services. So with the pandemic, uh, we learned that telehealth services were a great way for women to get care and for families and children to get care. And what we're really working on is making sure that that maintains even after the public health emergency ends is that states and folks um, are still able to use telehealth services. So those are some of the things that we're working on around um, increasing access to quality care. I'm gonna switch over to supporting healthy women and babies. And this is really a broad area of policies and programs. Um, it's really looking at promoting health, improving health equity, uh, prevention of disease, patient safety, preventing infant mortality. So we're really advocating for a comprehensive national response to the high maternal mortality, morbidity rates, um, and really looking and, and looking at our racial disparities and looking at women of color who face more health disparities than some of their counterparts. And why is that happening? And really looking and delving into the data and the evidence and the science and what can we do to change that? What are the policies that we need to do and we need to change in the United States so that every single woman is having the good quality access to healthcare, but also equitable, that we're all having the same kind of healthcare. So one of the two of the things that we're looking at are access to mental health services, as well as workplace policies for families. So you should have heard, or maybe you've heard rumblings about paid family leave. Um, that's a really big piece of legislation that March of Dimes feels very passionate about and making sure that families have the leave that they need when they need it and that they don't lose their jobs in the process of doing it. And the last bucket is improving research and surveillance. And as I mentioned earlier, this is kind of where March of Dimes started. And it's really looking at medical research. We're looking at um, healthcare surveillance. We're looking at any essential way that we can prevent, uh, first of all, either prevent, diagnose, and treat any kind of maternal or child health conditions. And then we track that. And then we wanna promote health equity at the same time. So we're looking at maternal mortality review that happens in each of our states. We're looking at how the newborn screening programs are, are done in our states and modernizing them. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is the vaccine compliance. Um, with COVID happening, we've had a lot of our families who are behind in their vaccines. So we're really passionate about making sure our kids are getting into their well-child visits again, that they're getting up to date on their vaccines and that parents are also participating in vaccines so that we can prevent disease. Our claim to fame is polio, that's what we started with. We know that if we vaccinate, we can eradicate disease. And it's the best way for us to maintain public health for everybody. So that's probably my biggest thing that I'm working on right now is around vaccines and making sure that we have good policies in our states. And I have to apologize. I'm used to doing a, a lot of talking that's very interactive. So it's hard for me to just be looking at me. So if you're putting things in the chat, I hope so. So some of the opportunities for you to get involved with us and for us to get involved with you. So I liked some of the conversation that happened with the presenter before me. So March of Dimes has every year, we do lobby days, where we formerly used to call them lobby days, where we brought volunteers to the Capitol, very much like what you guys do through your organization, we're doing the same. And some of you have probably participated in this, but we call it March for Change. And this year it's kicking off in early March. Um, there are dates and states listed on this website, which I'll give you more information about, but you can join us at March for Change, which is a national campaign to really raise awareness and advocate in support of March of Dimes policies, but they're not just our policies, they're all of our policies. Um, I think it's important to understand that when we are out there advocating, we are very much like you guys at the um, 
at G GFWC that we're nonpartisan. We don't endorse any candidates. We are here about the issues. We are here to bring the advocates who have lived experience to the state houses, to the stakeholders, to the policymakers, and help their voice be heard. Oftentimes, they are the ones who can really make the difference in, in creating policy, but also getting the ear of a legislator. I get paid to do this. I'm a lobbyist. It's what I do. I get the most thrill and, and, and jazzed, and, and I feel the best about what I'm doing when I bring an advocate, when I bring a family to, the, to a capital, to a legislator, or to a webinar. And lately, we've been doing lots of uh, phone chat and Zoom. But for me, that's, that's really what I'm here to do, is teach others to bring their voice forward. So if there's anything that you take away from my presentation today, it's that you have a voice and your voice matters and you can use it in lots of different ways. We would love for you to participate with the March Dimes. And I would love to participate in some of your activities that you guys are doing. I was on, on the website today. Um, I live in Connecticut and I heard some names out there. So Deb and Wendy, shout out to you out in Connecticut. Um, I want to know more about what you guys are doing also, and if there's some synergy around some of the bills that we're working on here in Connecticut. So March for Change, if you want to join us, there's a website here. I can also have Kelly put it in the website, I mean, in the chat for you, but you can join. Um, we have it across the country. There are certain states. We also have a federal fly-in that's happening at the end of March. We're bringing volunteers in to do some Hill visits. And I we'll leave some time for questions. Yeah, Erin, everything is in the chat. Great job. Thanks, Kelly. Erin, um, GFWC has a legislative action center that we can use uh, to push out alerts to our members when there's a bill um, being considered on the floor. We would love for you to share um, the bills that you all might be following. Um, you know, you can send those to myself, Darrell, to um, uh, Deb. We would love to um, keep an eye out. I know last, uh, last year, one of the bills that you all supported um, did get passed um, and we were part of that, right, Darrell? Oh, yeah. The omnibus bill, yes. Yeah, omnibus. it was in the omnibus. There was some funding that you all needed or yes. wanted. Um, let's see what other questions we might have. Um, again, they, they're they asking if you wouldn't mind sharing your email address um, so sure. they could contact you. I bet those folks in Connecticut are going to be reaching out. Um, one of my committee, one of the committee members is from Connecticut. So um, I'm sure she'll love to get in touch. Um, it was very interesting. I love um, that you have three areas that you're working on and all of them really focus on healthy women and children. Um, and it, 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 the effects of this COVID has had, um, have really affected women and children more than anyone else. There was also um, another question that one of our members had and Kelly uh, did answer it. Um, directly, but I just wanted to see if you could answer it for the um, audience so that they could all hear a response. Um, and just let them know about if there is any specific advocacy efforts that you wanted to promote to our members specifically, something that we could share on our legislative action center. There is, there's a lot. So March, you know, cause we're pretty, we're a big organization we've been around for a long time. So we're in many different areas and that's why, you know, I've kind of just highlighted a few of them. I would share that with, I think the best way to do this is probably go on our website, which is in the March of Dimes website, where we have all of our policy priorities listed. Um, but Julia, I think what we can also do is link you with some of our folks in our advocacy center. We have a deputy director who really organizes all of our, um, I guess social media is the best way to, to say it, but through our action network. And that will, he will give you the specific bills, when to take action and who to take action with so that there is some synergy between some of the work that you guys are doing across your states, but also as an entire federation for women's health and as well as families. So families are, are a big piece of what we look at, right? So we say women's health, but we mean all families. Yeah, I So think I'd be happy to share. Honestly, there's so many, I would be here for an hour telling <laughs> you about all of the ones that we're working on. So no, that's <laughs> not avoiding the question, it's just, there's a lot. 
I got it. Well, one thing that you said tonight that was surprising to me was about Medicaid only covering 60 days for postpartum. Not um, anymore. Yeah. Now, yeah, we've changed that. And so yes. now the states are starting to really pick up on that. So I forgot the last count, but I think we're close to 30 states who have adopted this policy. And so women will start to get coverage for up to 12 months. That's great. It's fantastic. I mean, and honestly, one of the things that we're seeing the biggest improvement is that women who need mental health services or behavioral health services will actually be able to go see their doctor past 60 days. Here's a so. couple a couple more questions. The event that is in DC, the March for Change, um, is that something that the GFWC members could sign up to do? They absolutely can, especially if you're in the DC area, we would love to have you. Um, and if you go on that link or I can supply, I can give you the slides. I can also, I don't know if Kelly, if, if you were able to put it in the uh, I think chat, she did. we can also give you that. Yeah, I think she put it in the, in the chat. Perfect. Um, Another question was whether before Marcus you before you ask, ask that one, Juliet. Um, okay. I just want to do this as a time for everyone. Um, I think we're going to open it up, open the floor up to yeah. questions for both organizations at this time. So get those last minute questions in so that we can ask if there was anything that you guys wanted to ask March of Dimes or the representative from St. Jude. Um, get those in now. Um, sorry to interrupt. You. Perfect. No, no. I'm glad you did, Darrell. Um, a question about whether March of Dimes is global or only in the United States. So we do have a global component, an international component. Most of our international work is around birth, childbirth defects because that is still a major issue in many countries. So uh, we do have an international component. But what I'm talking about today is all in the United States. Right. Good. All right, any more questions? Few more. It looks like um, Kelly has shared in the chat the link where you can see if your state has adopted the Medicaid postpartum extension. So that would be really good. And states that have not, that gives you something to advocate for, ladies. And I, vice versa, would love to know more about what some of the areas are doing. So some of the states that you guys are working in. Um, and where you have your clubs, I would love to learn more because I can hook you up to people across the states that are also March of Dimes. So I think similar to what Beth was talking about, we I would love to be able to do that as well. So if you have events coming up, you have my email at least, you can reach out to me and I can connect you to the right people. Great. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions. So, um, Beth, I'm glad you, I was just going to say, Beth, please come back on screen so we can see you. Um, it's been wonderful to have both St. Jude's and March of Dimes with us tonight. And of course, these are two affiliates that we have long had a partnership with and our members love supporting. And now we're going to try to push our members to, to do the advocacy component for you. That's really been um a big push that we've had over these last six weeks is training our members so that they feel comfortable with advocacy. Um, and um, Darrell, if you'll pull up the slides, um, just to, I want to let everybody who's here tonight, again, see who your region um, committee member is and know that we are here to help you with your advocacy efforts on the state and the federal level. Um, we're here to talk to you if you need us to jump on a Zoom for your um, state or your club to talk about advocacy. Um, you might wanna just take a little screenshot picture of um, this slide so that you have our emails. We will be putting on a workshop. Um, a workshop at the annual convention in Kentucky, where we will be running for the roses and sporting our derby hats and having a lot of fun. Um, I have to say the last six weeks has been probably the most fun I've had. This webinar and this series has just been awesome. Um, and we're gonna continue that fun into the convention and on. Um, we couldn't do our work without our legislative consultants. So 
I have to have Darrell give you her information as well. Deborah, Debbie Bryant, she's with Unified Solutions. She's our consultant. She helps us um, know and set the priorities for the, um, the year. She finds the bills that are nonpartisan, that are germane to our resolutions and that are supported by our affiliate organizations like St. Jude and March of Dimes. And Darrell, you have to share your information too, because without you, this would not have run. Um, you know, Darrell and Jolie, our second vice president, and I started talking about this webinar months and months ago, and I don't think any of us had any idea how successful and well received it would be we've had you know 200 or more registrations every week um and we're seeing people are signing up and attending all six which is awesome um i think that our members are definitely catching the legislative accuracy bug they definitely want to help people in need and um i just want to end the series also with Big thanks for our international president, Deb Stranowski, for supporting this um, webinar series. And in the words of Nelson Mandela, we can change the world and make it a better place. It's in your hands to make a difference. All of you can do that. All of you can do that now because you have got the advocacy tools. GFWC has them available to you. Our affiliates have tools for you. Please use that voice. Thank you. That's right. Thank you, Juliet. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Kelly. I, you know, Juliet put it very well. This has been one heck of a great series that we have been able to bring to you right there at home. And we plan to have many, many more. So I hope that you will participate in our future um, series, which the next one will be on three of our honorary chairman we have this administration. We've heard from one, Robin Yoakum, who is an author, and he is our honorary education and libraries um, chairman and junior at, um, honorary chairman as well. And we will be hearing from our honorary chairmen from the health and wellness, CSPs. Um, oh, gee, Jolie, help me here. Um, oh, our, our new culture. Special. Um, has a great article in our upcoming Club Woman magazine, which will be coming out in the next few weeks. And our um, signature program, Health and Wellness Chairman as well. So please register for those. I believe we may have um, promoted that in today's news and notes. So please register for that. And also, don't forget, just around the corner is our Women's History Month. Please do something within your community to recognize, recognize those women who have made a difference, not only in your communities, in your state and the world. So thank you again. Enjoy the uh, evening and we'll see you all in Louisville, Kentucky in June. Thank you very much. Bye guys. Thank you. Thank you guys Bye. so much.